Thank you, Jim, for that introduction. My name is Adele Pugliese. Thank you so much, uh, Jim, for bringing us together. My name is uh, Emma Oconi. I'm pretty excited to be here today to have this discussion with Emma on how to build an effective data-driven culture. So let's start there, Emma. Why don't you talk about you know, how you achieved this uh, at the government, because I'm sure that wasn't an easy task. Thanks, Adele. I mean, one thing I will say is that um, data is a journey, so it's not uh, fully achieved. It's, a, it's an ongoing journey to, to get to, you know, to that ideal state. And the, the most important thing in the journey is that we need to bring the entire organization along. So what that means is whether you're working on the front lines or you're busy doing policy programs or operations, um, you need to be on that journey, that data journey. And to be able to do that effectively in an organization, you really need to align with, with the business and where the business is going. So in order to do that, you need a data strategy that speaks to the, to the goals of the business, the why of the business, and some of the shifts that we're going to anticipate as, as business evolves and changes as we kind of work in this really complex uh, world we're in. So I'm curious, Adele, how, how have you experienced it from, uh, from your perspective? Yeah, very similar to the approach you described. Um, working for different organizations throughout my career has given me an opportunity to sort of um, experience different approaches. One of the things that I've learned when you're striving to achieve a culture of, of data is really starting to understand the capability of where your starting point. So I, 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 once you establish the strategy, which is so important because that's what connects the business to the data and helps you sort of inform, uh, you know, the prioritization of the data. Otherwise, it just becomes so overwhelming. So one of the things that I like to start with is baselining sort of the capability of where the organization is at, because that helps me figure out um, the plan in terms of how we move forward. But more importantly, I think it's really important in organizations because, as you said, Emma, they, this is a journey and most organizations <clears throat> is going to take time for us to get through this. So it's about kind of developing that plan, but also managing the expectations of everyone in the organization, right from the most exactly. senior leader to the point of what you said, which is um, the front line. What have you exactly. seen in terms of some of the things that you've done that have been effective? I mean, Adele, like you, like you said, it's, um, it really needs to align, align with where the organization is going. And you need to really speak the language of the business. So, so, so it's clear in terms of what exactly you're doing when you're talking about things like data governance and data literacy. So from a practical perspective, um, what I've worked through is really um, instituting a data literacy program across the organization. And we didn't do this alone. So we didn't sit in our chief data office to do this. What we had to do is really engage with experts across the department, subject matter experts, to really understand the realities they live every day in terms of the work we do in really delivering services across the country. And then evolving the data literacy program to reflect that reality so that it really applies to people on the front lines, people in operations, people in policy, and then work with our HR colleagues who are experts you know, at delivering learning and training across the organization. So from some of this experience, what I've learned is it's one thing to look at data, you know, from a purely technical perspective, but if you really want to drive the data-driven and the data-enabled culture across the organization, you cannot do that in the silo of data. You cannot do it definitely by sitting in an IT shop. You need to leave that zone and go and talk with people across the organization and make sure that whatever you're trying to establish, be it governance, be it stewardship, you know, be the data literacy program, it reflects the realities that people across the organization face on a daily basis. So curious, Adele, just some of your uh, examples of some of what you've experienced as you've tried to move forward with the data culture. Yeah, it's really important, as you said, just to pull it out even further, is to connect with your stakeholders. Each stakeholder has a different perspective and a different requirement and different prioritization when it comes to the data piece of it. 
So what I found effective is understanding that at the deeper level and trying to connect it back to that strategy in terms of the, again, reinforcing that prioritization. Um, so, so that's one of the things I find as being the chief data officer, um, is you're the chief data champion for the organization. And you have to wear multiple hats depending on who you're conversing with or, or what is it that you're trying to achieve. Another um, effective tool that I've used is trying to figure out as we go through and determine the roadmap and the prioritization of that is figure out where we can deliver some of those, those, you know, fruits uh, back to the organization. So what value can we start to demonstrate back to the organization? Particularly if you're starting with an organization from a maturity and capability level, which is fairly low. So it's very difficult to kind of move an organization on that data literacy when you have to start at that level, you have to do it gradually. So by demonstrating, showing what's in the art of the doable as to the why some of the requirements of just basic things in terms of, you know, understanding where the data is, what data do you have, what's really important data, and, you know, how do we determine quality of it? A lot of that will come through understanding the business, understanding the process. You know, we live in a world today because we're trying to enable the data. We're trying to enable the data to do what? Well, first and foremost, you're trying to drive that value from the data, whether it's through insights, uh, maybe advanced analytics, but also in the digital world where we're trying to enable the data to help refine the business, help to rethink the way it could be and um, deliver some more of that efficiency and effectiveness. And the other piece of it, I think that is really important to um, kind of introduce in this is about managing the risk of data and understanding what that is to an organization, at what point do you need certain controls, what controls. Um, and as we advance more into sort of the advanced analytics, you know, it's starting to become very clear on the data, what you have. Uh, how you're going to use it and really understanding the impacts. And, you know, we're, we're living in a time from a data point of view, as we see the evolution of a lot of capability, especially on the technology front. I think the requirements and the pressure coming on that piece is just going to grow over time. And I think it's an exciting opportunity from a leadership point of view to actually inform and to really influence to make sure things are done um, right and continue to be uh, in terms of the future. And what are your, like, I'm sure from your perspective, Emma, that some of that sort of data risk has, has, and it, it actually, I think, supports, in my, in my opinion, that culture when you're building it out. I, I couldn't agree more with you, Adele. As you see, I, I've been nodding to everything yeah. <laughs> you've been saying because, I mean, it's totally aligned with, uh, with a lot of the thinking we've had to do, you know, within my organization. Yeah. Um, your, your point about risk is so important. Like there's a, there's a careful balance, you know, between really trying to innovate and really pushing the envelope. And then that need to make sure that we're mitigating and managing risk that are being really incorporated as we go. One of the big challenges for us is that, you know, um, we need to deliver services across the country and we really need to do so in a way that's uh, respectful, you know, of, of the Privacy Act in a way that mm -hmm. does not uh, uh, cause any harm to people across the country. So a lot of that requires really understanding, to your point, the art of the possible with data, but also understanding some of the downstream implications. So for example, we can use data for a lot of good. So we can use data to deliver services to people who are most at risk. But if we're not really balanced in the way we do it, we can cause harm that we didn't really anticipate in terms of um, disclosing some inf information that we shouldn't really be disclosing. So within my organization, we take that very seriously and we've actually rolled out um, a data governance and stewardship program, which spans across the organization. And the, the goal of this, to your point, is really getting the people across the organization involved in a way that's very practical and concrete. So what that means, for example, is we have people in the programs and policy who are actually data stewards. And we've, we've really moved away from the textbook uh, application of data stewardship to a more practical application in terms of saying, 
what is most important to the organization in terms of data and how we deliver services? And what are those key areas we need to focus on in terms of how much we govern it? So you made a really good point about the different levels of maturity across the organization when you think through data. So we've rolled out our data governance uh, program in a way that's very agile and applicable based on where exactly the data maturity is. Because we found that in some areas, you know, really need more heavy data governance due to the risks. But in some areas, because we've established some degree of maturity, you know, um, we can be a bit more light touch in terms of how we're applying data governance. So as we evolve and as the organization really becomes more data maturity, more data mature and more data enabled, what I'm finding is that our ability to innovate grows. But yes, we always need to make sure that we've applied the basic foundational pieces, which is basically what we're talking about here. So over to you, Adele. One thing that you said that I found really interesting was um, the, the art of the possible, like looking at some of the, the potential and how far we can go when we think through digital and innovation. So I'm just curious how you've really looked at balancing that risk, you know, in a way that's practical in your organization. Yeah, that's a great question. And thank you for that, Emma. It, it is, um, I think to me, the, the value and the power of data comes together when you see it converge. And, and, and that's where sort of the, the guardrails come into place. So when you have the policy, the, the, um, the responsibilities outlined, just that education through that data literacy is so important because that establishes your foundation and, and allows you to actually move forward in innovation. But it's, it's really an art. So part of the art comes through understanding um, some of the, you know, the strategy of where the business wants to go, really understanding the business, understanding sort of what's happening around the business. You know, we live in a world today where things are moving so quickly, very dynamic. And then as you start to see the data come together, you start to get that cross disciplines from the different functional groups that embed in there, you start to see opportunities to do some creative activities, whether it's using some of that advanced analytics or just actually opportunities to uh, digitize processes to enhance that delivery to your end consumer and maybe do some really innovative things. I think from an organizational point of view, one of the things that uh, I've practiced and, and, and have done in, in a lot of the experiences um, with different organizations is one way to kind of minimize the risk or to manage it of innovation is to not sort of bet the farm and do it all at once. So it's kind of looking at projects, scoping it so that you go, okay, we're going to do this. And you maybe it's a small segment of your population that you're going to sort of test with or whatever it is that you're doing. So a lot of times what we do on the innovation piece, because innovation has risks and some innovations will work and some innovations may not, regardless of what that outcome is, it's the learnings that come through there that you want to make sure that you harness so that you can um, uh, advance the organization and take that learnings to the next um, project that you may be looking at. So it's really understanding um, sort of what is it that you're trying to do, taking that synergy of, of knowledge that you gain when you sort of work with the organization, with your different stakeholders and, and from a data point of view and sort of seeing it come together. The other piece I would add is um, we've been very fortunate that we've had uh, great partners to work with in certain industries and technology side of it um, that have been uh, willing partners to work with us to do some really unique uh, and innovative um, projects. And so um, the, the last piece I will introduce into this is how important it is to make sure that you've got the business engaged or just people along the way. So you want to get people excited. And some of these activities from an innovation point do actually create that level of excitement. Because as we know, data is a journey. It's a lot of work. It isn't easy. And so you need, you need some wins along the way. You need some excitement to keep, keep everyone engaged and, and, 
try to not only engage in terms of the energy to keep going, but they start to understand why they're doing what they need to do and why we need them to do certain things. And they start to really start to connect the value. And that really starts to really sort of contribute back to that data literacy and building that culture piece of it. And that's really what we're trying to do is we're, uh, most of our days is connecting the dots. It, it's trying to make it sort of come together. No, I, I mean, I, I couldn't agree with more with you, Adele, basically in everything you said, because the, the, the power, I think the power of it, you know, when we realize those wins, as you call it, is to systematize it so that it doesn't just become a one-off win, but it becomes a systematic win for the organization. And it can end up really moving the organization forward on that data maturity scale. So I really, I mean, I, I enjoyed how you said it. And it got me all excited, actually, <laughs> because, <laughs> because as you look at things like um, digital transformation, the opportunities I see are really endless in terms of using data, you know, to really power our, our organizations and really get to that state where we're able to anticipate some of the challenges that we're going to face, especially as things become more complex, you know, with all with the world changing around us, with oh, yeah. our population shifting, with climate change. So I think it's an opportunity for us to become more, um, I would say, anticipatory in how we deliver service and how we we really build trust within our organizations and external to it. If I could leave uh, today's discussion with a couple of key points for our audience to think about, and that is to recognize it is a long game um, and, you know, to sort of really understand and establish sort of your starting point. And what I mean by that is it, it really, it, it, whether it's conducting a maturity assessment of your organization, but I think it's important to sort of understand where your starting point is. To, to be able to determine um, and connecting that back to your data strategy in terms of helping you inform sort of that roadmap moving forward and looking at those wins that you can um, deliver back to the organization to keep them energized and engaged. And I think um, the other last point that I'll keep is um, in data in organizations and building that data culture, you, you have to be resilient and you have to be patient and, and good things will come um, through continuous effort and moving forward. I mean, I, I totally agree, Adele. And to, to add to what you said, there's one topic that we didn't have enough time to add to. And I just want to say, like, just given the challenges in terms of the data risks, the ethical implications, the, imp the inclusion factor in data is so important. So it's very important. Yeah to include um, the population you serve. Your teams should be representative of the population because that is what helps also in us mitigating risk, mitigating data bias, and really ensuring that as we're using data to drive our services and improve services and optimize operations, we're really doing it in a way that uh, mitigates the harm to people that we're delivering the services to. So I just wanted to add um, and close here and say that you know, lots of good can be done with data, but as we said earlier on, it would be important to ensure that you evaluate what you're doing on an ongoing basis and include, include by default to make sure that you're considering perspectives uh, of, of people who might not necessarily look like you. Thank you. Yeah, great point. Thank you. <laughs>